Hi guys, Mark Myers here with you today. I thought I'd do a quick video of the, this is a, will actually be part two of my Galileo 7 build. The first part was done, I don't know, approximately two years ago when the exterior kit, which you see, well, this is the full kit now, but the exterior kit was released and round two just came out with the interior kit for said Galileo. So this is just gonna be a quick review about what I did and what I wanted to do and how I achieved it. So the full interior is in there and we're gonna get a look at it. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the hatch. It's being held in place by magnets. Underneath, there's a hidden switch. There we go. And look inside see the full interior we'll come around here there's the control panel seats the figures aren't in there yet they have to be done here's one of them here's a mr. Spock figure unpainted unprimed just cemented together still have to address the seams and whatnot but eventually the whole crew well a crew will be in there probably going to be the crew from Galileo 7 uh, this is going to be a diorama and we'll look at the back there's the impulse engines lit and there's the access panel in the middle of the floor there and we'll show you how to, to remove that. The roof is removable. I did not put the kick glass inside the model. It's a pet peeve of mine. Kick glass always looks like kick glass. So I will be putting my own clear plastic in there to simulate the glass. It shouldn't be flush with the hull, which is the way the, the kick glass is molded. It should look like there's a <clears throat> a divider there or a secondary hull, so that's where the, the, the shields slide down when you see the model or the full-sized Galileo in the episode. it's You see it um, with the windows closed occasionally. Upper ceiling is lit. And again, this is just a, a quick video. I will be doing another one showing with, with the glass in there and the, the figures for the time being. Again, I plan on making this a diorama. And uh, here's the kit. You can get it at Mega Hobby, AAA Hobby, Stevens International, that's who I recommend, or Auto World. That's where I buy my stuff from. They're the only people I recommend. And uh, this was the original kit. Now, you could get the uh, full kit with the interior and the exterior in one, in one fell swoop if you need to, if you didn't pick this up years ago, because I know a lot of people were grumbling it didn't have an interior, so I'm not buying it, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't care at the time. Um, I was quite happy with just getting an accurate exterior Galileo model, and this one fit the bill. And I'm glad I did. And... I had all the colors pre-mixed and everything from several uh, uh, secondary market Galileos that were available that were full resin, quite heavy, quite a pain in the neck to make. This I could say is uh, with even with the interior, it's somewhat light, which is good because you don't want those, the landing gear flexing, although it won't because we have the steel, the well not steel, but the plastic holding it in there. You can see it on the side and uh, it's dead on accurate. Um, if you're a Trek fan, original series Trek fan, you can get this. You'll love it. Uh, let's see if we can get inside. Here we have the full interior. Um, sorry for the light. This is where the light for the rear engines go and the battery pack. 
things are just held in place by masking tape at this point because I am going to put the clear where the ceiling and cemented in place. I don't need to get in there. It's not a Barbie's dollhouse. I don't need to get in there and mess around with the figures once I put them in there and figure out how I'm gonna display it. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, a lot of great detail. So here we have the access plate covering removed so that Scotty can drain several phasers to give the Galileo 7 power to reestablish some kind of orbit as seen in the episode from the original series Galileo 7. How we do that is with the magnet on the other side. Sorry. Just slide into place. And there it's locked in place. Now, if we want to remove it, for display purposes or whatever. There we go. And again, so there it is. And I'm quite happy with it. It will have to, my further plans for it will have to wait as I got quite a few buildups ahead of this. This was done on me time over the weekend. And uh, I needed to retain what little bit of sanity that I have from building all these things. So uh, again, the upper hull or the outer hull was built a couple years ago when the kit was released. I already had the colors mixed and whatnot for the interior. This was retrofitted inside. You can do it. It takes a little bit of finesse and patience to put the, the new interior inside an already built kit, but it can be done. However, ideally, it's better to just purchase it all at one time. Uh, you'll have a better time of doing it. Uh, you know, a lot of seams to fill. Well, let me, that's not fair. There's not a lot of seams to fill. Just around the back area of the, of the ship where uh, the, the extended fins and all, you need to fill those in. And, and uh, make sure it looks good. I elected to go with the seam along the wing here because that's what the full size set looked like, not the filming miniature. As this is this model is 80% uh, based on the full size set, as per Gary Kerr, uh, and not the filming miniature, which is why I don't have the detail on the upper, the, the um, described in detail on the upper roof, which again is removable because this is based on the, um, uh, the set that with the actors interacted with and whatnot. But anyway, there it is. Um, part three will be the inclusion of figures and possibly and or the uh, di final diorama of, of the, the model. Thanks for stopping by.